In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today we're celebrating the memorial of St. Pius of Pietrosina, or St. Or Padre Pio. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord
Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest, St. Pius, a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry renew the wonders of your mercy, grant that through his intercession we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ, and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for everything under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to be far from embraces a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What advantage has the worker from his toil? I have considered the task that God has appointed for the sons of men to be busied about. He has made everything appropriate to its time and has put the timeless into their hearts without man's ever discovering from beginning to end the work which God has done. The Word of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, my mercy and my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Lord, what is man that you notice him, the son of man that you take thought of him? Man is like a breath, his days like a passing shadow. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke.
Once when Jesus was praying in solitude and the disciples were with him, he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the ancient prophets has arisen. Then he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said in reply, The Christ of God. He rebuked them and directed them not to tell this to anyone. He said the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we're celebrating this memorial of Padre Pio, who's such a, in a way, a mysterious saint, but so beautiful that he lived so recently in, in the time span of many of our lives here. And he, I, I love that we have this gospel today because in a very real way, a very ostentatious way, he lived it when Jesus here speaks about how the Son of Man must suffer greatly, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, be killed and on the third day be raised. I think most of us know that Padre Pio had that, had that mysterious gift of the stigmata, so sharing in the suffering of Christ in a very real and physical way that kind of throughout his life came and, and went, but there, so there are different manifestations of the stigmata. In a way, it was a mystery to himself. He, you know, he didn't have control over it. It wasn't something that he had asked for. It was confusing to him. It's not something that he wanted, but it was something that was given. So he, he received it in a way he had to suffer it. And because he had it, of course, there's so much misunderstanding from other people around it that he experienced a great amount of persecution. People thought that he was you know, faking it or, or causing it to happen. So for, for much of his life, he was not able to offer Mass in public because there were so many people coming to him. And the authorities thought that he was uh, a, false, a false saint, faking it, putting on these, this show for people. And so he had to suffer that deeply and um, suffer, suffer the misunderstanding and the rejection of those who really should have been loving him and embracing him. At one point, there was a, a close friend of his who started to speak back bad, badly about one of the cardinals or the bishops who was, who was not being understanding of Padre Pio. And Padre Pio rebuked his friend sternly because he knew that that was the other part of his virtue and his suffering. He, he, his obedience was so deep and so profound. It was part of the way that he was so deeply united to Christ. It wasn't just in his suffering, but also in his, in his will and his desire to be united with Jesus in all things. Even if it meant he would be misunderstood and rejected by those who were closest to him. In a way, he reveals there part of the mystery of our Christian lives. And obedience is meant to be so deep, so, so deep in our life. So he, part he participated in Jesus' suffering in every level, in that rejection, but also in the physical way. He also, I think we mysteriously shared in Jesus' resurrection in this life. So it, that, that manifested in his, uh, the, the other great gifts that he was given of being able to read people's souls in the confessional. People would come to him and he'd say, are you forgetting something? <laughs> and then remind them or tell them exactly what they did. Or he would ask them, to, why don't you leave for a little bit and come back when you're ready to tell the whole truth. You know, so there was a, a kind of a hardness. Sometimes he was kind of known as, a, as being kind of hard. But once people came to him in genuine, genuinely seeking mercy, he was so gentle. 
and embrace them with the, with the full love of God. He also had that gift of bilocation, and there's a mystery in that too, because it, every time he bilocated, it seemed to be a deeper revela revelation of his gentle fatherhood, which is to say the fatherhood of God the Father. He'd be present to people when they were most in need and give them the comfort, the knowledge of, of God's presence, somehow participating in that, in the mystery of God's love through this gift of being somewhere else other than where he was physically. I mean, he, of course, he also had many, many miracles that were, that were worked through him, profound miracles of healing. And, of course, other things that he was doing. I mean, as he, he built a, a hospital there at St. San Giovanni Rotondo, a very uh, full life. But he, he's, such a, he's a mystery in a way he, he holds together the whole mystery of Christ. And we look at his life like, why, why was all that given to him? But his, he stands as an icon. But he, is, he is united to the same Jesus, obviously in a very, very beautiful, very obvious way. But his, the, that Jesus is the same Jesus every one of us is deeply and profoundly connected to. It's his life so deeply caring. And when we look at Padre Pio, when we pray with him, we come into contact again with that life of Jesus. But it's the same life of Jesus who is living in us, the same Jesus that we are receiving today in the gift of the Eucharist. Let's stand together and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the Church, may the Lord continue to bless her and increase her in number. We pray to the Lord. For policymakers, may, guide, may God guide their actions in working to protect human life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. For all who are alienated from their faith, may God bring upon them his faithful and healing presence. We pray to the Lord. For our neighbors in need of prayers, may God enfold them with his mercy and grant them peace. We pray to the Lord. We pray for August Martin, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they enjoy eternal life in heaven and behold the face of God. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, in your mercy, please hear and answer the prayers we offer today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed Padre Pio, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Rem remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of the Blessed Pottery Pio, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.